how to write a business plan, coming up now. Hi everybody, I'm Oliver, CIBS Executive MBA and Startup Coach at AskMeStartup.com. I have been in the startup life and coaching since 2014 and I want to share my insights and know-how gained during that time with you so you are able to create better and more profitable businesses in the future. If you want, you can also download our free startup checklist link in the description below. In general, there are two different types of business plans, a traditional version and a lean version. Today, we're gonna to talk about the traditional version, which is a more sophisticated, more detailed version. Uh, there will be a link up here to a lean version description. The first thing every business plan starts with is what is called the executive summary. Even though this is the first thing on the list to read through, this is the last thing you want to write because actually you want to condense all your know-how gained into a one pager, not more than one page. And it should contain your product or service, your customer structure, and your mission of the company, as well as expected fundings and or expenses. I personally would not write expected income in there because usually these are anyway fake up numbers and you come up with a lot of assumptions to calculate them. So I would rather recommend that you try to achieve so many customers, etc., etc., but are going to give more details on the expected income once you have more know-how on the market. That does not mean that you shouldn't think about uh, the numbers and if they make sense to you or not, but I have not seen a single business plan wherever the assumptions have been met. Now, a traditional business plan usually starts off with what is called a company description. This is where you describe everything concerning your business. It starts usually with what is called a mission statement and that mission statement actually describes how are you going to proceed, what type of products to whom and what is the benefit or your edge over the competition. You then want to describe your principal members like who are you going to do that with? Who is actually in that company? What is their background? What know-how do they have? And how are they involved in the whole system? And finally, you would also like to describe the legal structure of your business. You want to know whether it's an LLC, one person company, whatsoever, it doesn't matter, but you need to describe it. The legal structure is important because actually it depends on the business you do. You need to think through which is the best structure to have. Now, I'm not a lawyer and I'm, I cannot recommend any specific legal structure to anybody, but I can recommend that you ask someone, your lawyer or whoever, to figure out what structure you should actually aim for before you start out with your business. At least have a plan what you plan to do in the future. The next big section is called market research. Now in here, you want to describe and find everything that is concerning your business, everything that you think is relevant for you to grow your business and to describe the market uh, you're working in and with. In this section, you first want to describe what is called the industry. Now the industry describes who are your competitors, what type of market environment are you expecting, what are the customers actually expecting, etc., etc. You want to be very detailed here and understand what are the key principles in this business and what are the essentials that you need to provide as a service or a product. Additionally, you want to give an outlook on whether that industry is going to grow or shrink or stay the same. You want to know if there are disruptive elements on the horizon that could break this industry or are you actually the disruptive element? I mean, all of these things add up to make sense of the business case. The next section in the market research is your customer segmentation. Now you want to know who are your customers? Are you selling, for instance, to other businesses? So are you going to do B2B? Or are you selling to direct end customers at B2C? Is it a service? Are they expecting more than just a service? Are they expecting a product plus a service? You have to figure out who they are, what age structure they are, what gender they are maybe, um, what income level they have. I mean, get all the insights you can get, use internet search, you will find so many information, but do that very, very thoroughly because here is where you can get the edge over your competition. If you understand your customer segmentation better than anybody else, you also know how to address them properly. And that will help you afterwards with the further marketing uh, input that you want to give. Let's say, assume you're going to do a B2B business. You want to understand which types of B2Bs you're going to. It's, for sure, it's not going to be everybody. I mean, if you're selling fish, 
restaurants might be good B2B, but maybe automotive might not be, but you never know, maybe they need fish oil. So you want to make clear that what type of businesses you're actually focusing on. And secondly, what does each specific customer segmentation actually requires or is looking for? It might be that restaurants require just the fish and the automotive might require a fish plus a certificate of the oil or a uh, larger quantities and they are to order more in bulk like once a year and the others order it like every week because they need fresh fish. You have to figure out all of these things and then you're clear to go for the next step. In the next section, you want to describe the company's advantages. You want to understand what is the edge over your competition. What can you do better? What can you do faster? What can you do in a smarter way, in a more cost-efficient way maybe? But remember, I mean, cost-efficient, I mean, there's only one company in the world always who is the cost leader. All the others have to figure out a different way of addressing things. They might have a better marketing, a better appeal to a, a stronger brand. Just figure out and describe it in, in detail what is the edge over your competition. Also, do not forget to incorporate further thinking in there. Do not try to cheat yourself and say, look, because it's me, I'm gonna sell this product and everybody will like it. That actually will not help you because if you start cheating yourself here, you will lose on the, on the other end because A, you have to get up funds and then you can't pay them back because you're not making any relevant sales. Potential advantages could be that you just have a virtual business. I mean, right now in the lockdown time, right? This could be a great thing. If you just have uh, home office people, right now you don't have a problem. You already have the business edge and other companies will have to establish it right now. So that makes you faster, quicker, more efficient because everything is set up this way. This could be one of the description. Or you decide that you're actually a local grocery store. So someone who is actually around the corner available for the people around you. And you're going to address and do home delivery service to for the next 4, 6, 10, 11, whatever blocks. Anything of this nature you have to describe in there and why this is better than anybody around you. And really try to do a thorough research on all the competition out there. Because sometimes you can't see the competition in real life. Uh, and a simple Google search sometimes in sufficient, you might have to hack it a little bit, look for different birth. And one of the good things, for instance, if you're like a local business, use Google Maps and then type in, let's say, pizza delivery service if you want to do pizza delivery. And you will see how many pizza delivery services are actually registered around the area. Then figure out what they actually do and what is it that you do different and better. The next thing you want to do a thorough research on is what type of regulations apply for your specific type of business. Let's make an example. If you want to manufacture breathing apparatus, which is currently all over the place, what type of regulations really apply? In Europe, for instance, that would be the MDDR, the Medical Device Regulatory Directive, or it might be an FDA um, approval that you need, uh, which might be difficult, for instance, if you are a car manufacturer and suddenly are forced to manufacture breathing apparatus, right? So there are different regulations applying to each different industry and you should be very well aware of them because if you don't do, it can get very expensive very fast and you might even be forced to shut down your business. So knowing this upfront is a big, big thing. That's why you want to do this step very clear. If you're not sure about this, right, then ask someone who is I mean, regulatory experts are around all over the world. You can ask, I'm sure, in Facebook groups or in other groups, like to at least give a hint who is knowledgeable in this area and then try to contact them to get some help. Because to be honest, regulations is a business of its own and you need to find someone who is really properly uh, savage uh, on what the regulation, which regulations actually apply to you and which not. The next big section is what is called service or product line. Now here you want to describe let's say which type of product or service you're going to sell and you be very specific. If you, have, if you manufacture a, a pizza, for instance, you want to describe, I'm going to do pizza uh, with ham, pizza with cheese, pizza with ham and cheese. Be very detailed on which products you're going to provide and wh uh, what is their uh, respective pricing. Now, the pricing can be a little bit challenging because you can make up any price you want. However, you also want to make sure that your pricing gets you a profit. Might be good, right? gets your customers to buy it might be good, right? I mean, you can sell a pizza for $10,000, but who's going to buy it? I don't know. The next part you want to define is what is your expected product life cycle? Uh, I'll give you an example. In our company, we decided at the beginning that uh, the machine we're going to manufacture has a lifetime of seven years. That's what we call expected lifetime. That's what we 
how we did the, the R&D, that's how we designed everything so that it, we are sure that it lasts at least seven years. Now, this might be very different. I mean, a pizza, you don't want a lifetime of seven years, right? I mean, it would be a terrible pizza, I would say. But you want to be sure that you know what the customers expect and what you can offer and that these are in alignment. That's why you have to define what is your expected product life cycle. The next section is what are you doing, planning on R&D? Where do you want to spend efforts and why? Do you want to develop technology further? Do you want to develop services further? Do you want to develop customer experiences different? I mean, there are so many things you have to think through and find out what is it that customers really want. And finally, you also want to go through the IP situation. IP stands for intellectual property. Now, this can be anything from are there trademarks that are affected by my company or I am affecting other trademarks or are there patents that are affecting the, my product or service that I cannot or have to pay a fee to get? These are things you do not want to play around with. Um, but I can also tell you that um, most of the time, specifically for patents, you will find workarounds. For me personally, that's a side note, patents are just a description of how not to do it. The next block is marketing and sales. You want to describe here all the things you want to do to acquire customers and get customers buying from you. The first thing is your marketing mix. Whom are you going to address and why in which channel? Really describe the proper funnel from A to C and find out which is the best way to find and talk to your customers. The first thing you want to define is your growth strategy. What is it that you plan to do on all these actions that actually enable your business to grow and get more customers and get more income and by that are able to grow faster and faster and faster and bigger and bigger. From that point on, you want to define the marketing structure, how the marketing funnel is going to look like, which customers are you going to address where you already know your customer segmentation. So now you have to address them individually, which are the right tools to do that and which are the most promising factors influencing decisions to buy or consider your service or product. The message you want to bring is what is the benefit for your customer when they buy your product? It's never about your product. Nobody gives a damn about your product because your product means nothing to nobody. But if you solve a problem for them, if you solve this customer's problem with your product or service, they're going to buy it. But you have to talk to them in a way that they get their problem solved and you just sell the product with it. As an example, you might sell hamburgers or a pizza. Nobody would care, right? But if, he, if somebody has a wedding and at that day all the restaurants are shut, but you have a home delivery pizza service, you're solving the problem to those people right now. You can tell them, look, I will be able to provide you the pizza wherever you need. Then the customer doesn't care whether it's a pizza or who sells a pizza, but he cares about his problem being solved that he has no food at the current stage of his wedding. Last but not least, you want to understand how you're going to sell. Do you have someone in, in charge for sales or not? Is it everybody in charge of sales, which is also possible these days, or is it just specific people who are in contact with customers afterwards? What type of communication is required for the sales process and what type of back office things are in need that the sales process goes in smooth and easy? And remember, put customers first. No matter how much you're going to do, the sales will only work if customer experience is great and that starts with sales, but it continues with off the sales processes as well. Now, the next section is the funding request. Here, you want to be very specific what type of funds you need, how much you need, and for what period of time they are supposed to last. You want to describe to the investors what they're getting in exchange, let's say equity in the company or whatever, uh, and what could be the potential multiplication factor for them. In order to do a proper research here, I would recommend that you put yourself in the shoes of an investor. Think as if you are going to invest in another company. What are you interested in? You want to understand the risk benefit ratio. You want to understand what investors are actually looking for. And that is really different from industry to industry. However, investors usually are financial guys, especially if you go like venture capitals or anything, they are on their own terms. They have like a three years when out of those 10 companies they invest in, two have to be successful and then they make all the money that they're required to do. The next section is going to be the financial projections. Now, in this section, there is one thing that is utterly crucial and that is to put down and clearly mark your assumptions the financial projections are based on. 
Without those assumptions, nobody can follow through and nobody will believe any of the numbers anyway. I mean, let's face it, all the calculations tool will calculate any number you put in there. But it's the assumptions that make or kill the case. Because if they're reasonable, I will likely understand the numbers. But I will not believe them because I know that things will be different. But I know that your assumptions might make sense and that they are at the higher or the lower end of the spectrum to expect. Now the last section is not really a section, but it's the appendices. So in the appendices, you want to add on any additional material you have collected during your research, anything that can make sometimes the situation clearer. It might be graphs for uh, your industry. It might be additional calculations. It might be uh, product plans you have or uh, new products or let's say disruptive technologies you come across. I mean, Anything that will add on or people want to, if people want to deep dive into some of your information, you want to put it here. Also part of the appendices should be your reference list. Put it in there so that people can follow through where you get those numbers from. Because if you get everything from a unknown website, people are less likely to believe them. But if, if it's from the a government, for instance, then numbers are more likely to be what they are in your report. Now, have you been writing a business plan or have you ever started writing a business plan? If so, what are your biggest pain points? Just leave a comment below. Thank you.